and this part is going to just go in the main on this. Welcome back to Cottage Treasures Quilting. My name is Ole Dupuy. Behind the camera is my lovely wife, Delilah Dupuy. Today we have for you a one block wonder type quilt. So we have built this beautiful stunning quilt out of Josephine wall pillow panels, these are called. So there's four different ones we have here. Um, and it's all built off of hexagons, whichever size you like. It depends if you follow our pattern or another pattern. Um, so this is a beautiful one we just finished and it's very easy for everyone to do because it's all straight lines. So you're going to build hexagons, but you're going to keep them in half and you're going to build strips and it's all straight stitching. There's no curves, nothing, just straight stitching. Um, you can see that this one's really playful in the fact that when you cut out these triangles, as you'll see in the video, um, you'll be able to basically design your own quilt. You can switch your triangles and turn them inside out. Um, or and you can de determine where the placement is you can see the theme here with lights coming off her wings um, the tree continuing upwards the rainbow continuing downward and kind of looking out into the sky or the planet in the background going out this way so this is a beautiful beautiful one block wonder we're going to get into these kits are available on our store at cottagetreasures.store and these are the four panels that there there are to choose from and I think this one right next to my head is going to be the next one we try so come join us with this video and uh, let's have fun all right so this for this one block wonder you're going to need seven of the same panel one's going to be for the main focal point and the other six are going to be used to put together to do precision cutting for your uh, triangles so this is the block that we've gone with each panel has four different um, styles we are going to do all of them um, just so you can see what they're all going to look like. This is, this is a stunning, stunning pattern here. So we are going to cut these out. We're going to rough cut this edge here because it's not too bad. Um, but then once we go to cut our panels out, they're going to have to be pretty precise. Um, so we're going to change our blade because we're going to be cutting through six different fabrics later. And it will be nice to have a new blade um, just to ensure that the cutting is deep. All right, so dispose of your other blade. And we are going to line up these dotted lines as best as we can and try not to cut into the nice part of the fabric. So I'll just open this up so you can see all four. Really nice. All right, so now we're going to cut out these panels um, and this is gonna be quite precise. Um, you're gonna do this the seven times and then you're gonna have your, since we're doing all four, we're gonna have one of each of these is gonna set to the side and the other six of the exact same ones will be used to make our um, our one block wonders cut out our triangles. So the most important thing here is you're gonna have to manipulate the, the fabric here. Between these two borders is an inch and, uh, inch and a half. So I know that I'm gonna have three quarters of an inch on each side. So I'm just going to line up my panel the best I can with my three quarter inch mark on my ruler. And it's gonna take some manipulating. Okay, that's good right there and I'm going to cut straight down the middle here and uh, I'm just not going to try and go too much further than the middle here. Okay, so that leaves us the exact same amount on each side is going to have a three quarter of an inch fabric left over. So I'm going to do that seven times in total and then we'll be ready to start cutting out our triangles. Okay, I wanna go with how unsquare digital prints are. So um, we've cut out one of our four quadrants there, again, doing the three quarter inch seam, um, giving that 
equal on both all, all four of the panels. But you can see here, I'm going to cut out this white border, but you can see when I line this up with my three quarter inch line, you can see just how how bad out the digital print is. So I am going to force this panel by just tugging in little spots to get it to line up with that inside border with my three quarter inch mark on my uh, ruler. So I'm going to make it mined and we will have to do this with all of our corners but once you get them then you will cut it. We want them all to be very similar right so we want everything we lay down on top of each other when we have all seven minus the one we're using for our focal point so our six laying on top of each other when we go to cut through all six layers that we're cutting exactly the same piece out of that, um, that border so three quarter inch and make it mind so I'm gonna end up with seven of these when I'm done cutting all these panels out. Okay, so we have our six patterns here. Our seventh one is put to the side. This one's gonna be our focal point, so we're not gonna incorporate that into the cutting of the triangles for the one block wonder. So what we've done is we've taken a pin and you are going to go into the corner and you're gonna poke through and you're gonna do this to all of them. This is just going to help us um, try and line these up as best as we can considering that they're prints and prints aren't ever perfect. Okay, so now we have them in all four points of this panel to help line these up as best as we can. So we can now cut our strips. So your strips can depend on how you are going to size up your your triangles using the 60 degree ruler. We're going to be doing three and a half because this panel when it, when we cut the white borders off is 17 and a half. That allows us to get three and a half five times. So that's what we're going to go with. All right, so we lined up our corner and put our pins in. Um, we showed you doing it in all four. We decided to do it in just two um, because it'll be easier to lay down. So you kind of lift it up like a coat hanger kind of with uh, the pin on each side on your fingers and that kind of lines up your one edge and then you're going to lay this down as best as you can and you're going to pull those pins okay so now we have this give or take about as best as we're going to get these lined up for the way prints work so now we are going to cut our three and a half inches and we are cutting through all six layers. So that's why we changed our blade. So again, three and a half inches. And we're hoping by the fourth cut that it'll leave you with another one at three and a half inches. And there we go, five strips at three and a half. So now we can go ahead and start using our triangle. Okay, so now we are ready to cut our triangles out. So we are using this 60 degree ruler, two to six inch. Um, we put a mark on at three and a half inches. Um, since we've already cut our fabric to three and a half inches, we're not gonna worry about the colored line. We're gonna worry about the butted end on the top here. So we are going to line this up with the corner down there. 
and this butted up to the top and we are going to cut out our triangles and this part is going to just go in the bin on this side that part right there Oops, so we're going to do that we're going to flip this over line it up with the line and butt the end of the the flat end at the top with the edge of the fabric and we're going to cut again and we are going to continue this process now once you do this just throw a pin through them and toss them to the side that way you don't lose them and you are going to know when you're sewing them together um, using that one butted end uh, which parts are the center of your triangle when you're sewing and we'll get to that later once we've cut these all out so we are literally going to do this now to every single strip we have okay and then once you've cut all these out pin them together so you have a whole bunch of piles of these and at least you won't uh, lose your order of because these are all identical right every piece underneath the one I just cut is six layers of all identical pieces and that's the whole point of this one block wander so we are going to continue to do this to all of this and then we will see you again when we are ready to start sewing them together all right now that we have all of our triangles cut out um, we are going to start sewing our halves together so um, you have many ways that you can alternate uh, your pieces once they're cut into triangles to determine how you want your one block right there's there's three different um, choices you have per triangle set of six triangles that you cut out so um, <clears throat> being that this is at the back of the angel fairies um, shoulder blade and I want to keep that yellow theme in the middle here I'm going to stick with it in that pattern so I'm going to sew those two seams together and then sew these two seams together and then I'm not going to sew them down the middle I'm going to pin it together and we will start putting them on our project wall so we can start arranging them in the best uh, arrangement that we like so I have a quarter inch seam foot on right now and I have a little bit of a, of a ruler here that's stuck down to my machine that just helps the edge of my fabric glide. <clears throat> so I'm just going to bring over my pieces and be conscious to remember how they go together. So I'll take three to the side right now and then all I have to do is flip those over and uh, the nice thing about this one straight edge here is straight edge to straight edge and you know you have the placement properly if you've chosen to go that route. So this is pretty easy, it's just going to come down and do a quarter inch seam and being cognizant to make sure that your pieces are parallel with each other. So we have two sewn together. So now we'll take our third one and make sure that we keep it the same same orientation that we had them and we're going to sew this one on as well. All right, and now we have our one half. So we're gonna go ahead and iron that down flat. And then we will finish off this side and we'll have two pieces. So, like I said, once you've sewn a half together of your full hexagon, you're going to, here's an example of them, the two halves, just overlay them about a quarter inch from each other and pin them together and we will be using that to put onto our project wall and
to help build the whole quilt before we start sewing it into strips. Right, and then at least it's held together so you can hang it on your project wall. All right, so we have now sewn all of our three and a half inch uh, triangles into half hexagons, right? Like in the last video, we just sew the one side a hexagon and then the other, and we don't sew them together because we are going to sew this whole quilt into strips. So we are gonna go over to a design board. In the previous videos, you can kind of see behind me, there's cotton on the wall. We put it over top of our Catitude quilt to give us a bit of a design board. And we are gonna lay these over our center panel to build um, the One Block Wonder quilt. So I'm gonna take you over there and show you what we've done so far. So you can see that we have laid all of our hexagons into a pattern that we really like. And then we obviously we've grabbed some black batik, black and blue batik we're gonna fill in the borders with. So these are all half hexagons. And all we did was put our panel in the middle and start building outwards. We have some accent pieces that we're gonna kind of have, um, kind of break the boundaries uh, just not to keep it so plain and square but you can see so delilah and me sat down and how do we want this to look uh, we had the rainbow and the waterfall kind of spread out this way uh, south of it we broke it into north south um, east and west you can see her hair and um, the top of her body kind of spread out like the wind is taking it to the side um, the wing you can see spreads out nicely to the to the um, west coordinate here and then you can see she decided to keep that horizon kind of run to the side right off the quilt with uh, the planet in the background and all the blues going this way. So what we've decided is we stuck all of these down you'll see some pictures in the corner of this video showing uh, the different places we had because we we kind of stuck them all down and then we took them off put them in different areas until we came up with this one which we like the best and we had all this open space and we wanted to kind of border her off before we do a little one inch um, strip and then the blue and black batik again then the binding we kind of want to build it off give it a little bit of borders because once you do all your quarter inch seam allowances she'll get a bit smaller and it's going to be about a throw size so if you're sitting on your chair and your lazy boy you've got a throw over or if you want to hang it up or bring it to the quilt shows right so this is what we have for a design that we've come up with so far. I am going to cut some more of these black uh, and blue borders to fill in this area right here. And then we'll be able to sew them into strips. We are going to sew, sew them right into strips, just like this, right? Take them over to the quilt. However, you've got to take them off the wall to keep them organized. Bring them over to the quilt machine and sew your 60 degree angles to make strips. We're going to do that for the whole quilt. Then when you get to the top portion that doesn't go through the panel, you're going to do these strips. You're going to do the south strips and then you're going to do these strips again. So when we build this quilt, we are going to put the top, the north section, the south, the bottom section, and then we'll be able to apply the sides. Then we're going to square our quilt off so we can then start doing our bordering and uh, we'll, but we'll go through all that process with you. So now we're going to start taking this down because we like the placement we have uh, once we fill in these spots here. And I'll show you just in a second. And then we are going to go ahead and start cutting our strips. So the borders end up being, um, sorry, not the borders, but the batik, the blue and black batik ends up being the same as we had cut originally, which is three and a half. So I'm going to cut another three and a half strip. Just lining up my ruler with the edge. And all I do is open it up, kind of just butt it up against the side here, somewhat square on, a, on some of the intersecting lines. And I'm going to cut just the corner off of it, just for this first piece. So I can gauge the length. Oh. So I can gauge the length of what these are going to be. So it's important when you're um, pinning your hex half hexagons on that you try to butt them up as best as possible, just so you end them all around the same plane. So I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to pinch it down where it meets up with this border right here. 
and we'll see what that measurement is. It ends up being about seven and a half inches. So I'm going to cut this straight at the seven and a half inch mark. Right, grab a pin, pin it in place. Right, if it's a little bit long, that's okay. We're going to square this up after the fact. Um, so I'm going to start cutting one, two, three, four, five, six more. And now I'm going to save it. Instead of cutting all these little triangles off, I'm now going to line it up again on the edge of the cutting mat, seven and a half to the point, the tallest point, and just butt your edge of your triangle ruler to the edge of uh, the fabric. Right, so that'll be one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I did need one more. And it's about nine and a half inches. I won't bother cutting it. I'll cut it when we square the quilt. Fill in these last couple here. The design board, like I said, we have a quilt in the back. We pinned on just some of our batting onto it to help us build a bit of a design wall. And if you're all wondering who this guy is, I finally cut my hair again after three and a half years of growing it. So we did another donation. So you'll get used to me being short haired for a bit again. And then probably watching me grow it out once again. Last one. So this pretty much finishes off our strips of how we're going to have this quilt look right and we are going to cut a one and a half inch of the accent fabric one and a half inch strips once we've sewn this all together and we've squared it off we're going to have a one and a half inch strip of this kind of bordering the whole quilt and then we're going to do the black and blue once again and then we'll be able to uh, build our sandwich bind it, do our free motion quilting. So we're going to start doing our strips now. We're going to start with this long strip right here and work, work our way right across the quilt. All right, we have now sewn our strips. All of our hexagons, half hexagons, are now sewn together in one long strip. Um, so these are all the ones on this side of the quilt. You can see the ones above in the north quadrant, uh, the ones down here in the south, and then the east. So now we've broken this into four quadrants. Pretend that the panel's not even there. You now have north, south, uh, east, and west. We are going to sew all of these ones together. We're going to sew all these ones together, all of these top five, all of these bottom five together, and then we'll have five pieces left in total including the panel then we'll worry about squaring off our panel with the bottom pieces and then sewing our quilt together so yeah just so for this process though for um putting these strips together right the most the biggest thing you're looking for is to have these put these middles make match up right so as i go I'm going to um, probably pin where those cor those points meet and uh, then I'll worry about the rest can stretch out. It doesn't bother me as much um, and then the same. So that's the next process. All right, so I have done uh, four strips together so far on um, the west side of the quilt and I've also done four strips together on the north side, the top. So I just wanted to show you the pinning process. So obviously we've sewn a couple together just to get our bearings and figure out the best way to do this to try and have those points of the hexagons meet up nicely. So you can see some of them are bang on, right? Some of them, some of them do go out just a little bit from each other. 
uh, which is not a big deal. You can't really notice it, but I find that if you pin at every intersection, um, it's your best chance of being able to line up, line up your, uh, your hexagons. So obviously you'll sew two strips together, like we said earlier, you'll um, iron that seam open, sew two together, iron the seam open, and now you've got two sets of two to now sew together. So that's where we're, we've already done it on this one, and now we're putting the fifth strip, which is the last full length strip on the west side of the quilt or the left side. So I just wanted to show you the pinning process. <clears throat> so when I'm pinning this together, Because the quilt uh, and some of the fabric stretches, I'm going for every intersection here. So I'm pretty much going to fold the quilt back just enough. All right, so I'm making sure that these points match up and that they're flush on the side. And once I've had that, I will grab this and I'm going to pin towards where I'm sewing from. So I'm gonna sew from this way and head this way. And I'm going to do this to every point, every spot that a triangle meets up with each other to try and get my points perfect. And you'll notice sometimes you got to pull your quilt one way and you have a bit of extra fabric. So it's just going to be a matter of stretching the fabric and uh, making it mind its place. So this is about the worst spot that I think I'll encounter so far. Um, another thing you can do is bring this over to the ironing board as well and spray some water down and use the heat from the, from the iron to shrink it just a little bit so I don't end up with a fold in the middle of my uh, quilt. So that's what I'm going to do with that spot. Other than that, the rest of this is pretty good. I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam all the way down removing the pins as I get to them so I don't hit them with my needle and then once it's done you'll iron your seam open. Okay so this is one of the bad spots where I don't want my fabric to fold over on itself um, and being that this is cotton it's very forgiving and it shrinks very easily so for a spot like this I give it a bit of a spray down with some water and I'll stretch it a bit so they almost match up and hit it with my iron to help shrink that fabric. Put some heat on it, into it for, you know, 10, 15 seconds. And now they line up a lot better for, for sewing, so that's a lot better to deal with. All right, so I wanted to demonstrate showing uh, the sewing of two strips together. So I have pinned them all down, again, like the last video, um, making sure that my points, my center sections all match up and then pinning them. So I like to just fold it up nice so I can stick it underneath my sewing table there. And again, quarter inch seam allowance. I have my needle set up to be exactly a quarter inch away from the edge of my foot so that's usually my guide so I can do my back stitch and go forward and I'll stop every time before I hit the pin and pull the pin out and I always like to have a pair of tweezers close by in case I got to catch the grab the fabric underneath and pull it out a bit so So the two things I'm looking for is that um, I'm following my quarter inch seam as well as making sure that these two fabrics are parallel on top of each other and every once in a while you have to adjust a little bit and just use your fingers to hold it in place as you suck it through the machine. Right till you make it to the next intersection and then gauge it again.
three blocks. You are in the bottom of the main off the branch down. stitch to hold it in and then I like to open it up and see how my centers lined up that one worked out good that one worked out really nice that one as well so it might look a little bit bunchy um, once you've once you've ironed your seams open and then you flip this back over to nice side up that's when I give it a spray down and put some extra heat in those in those areas. That was one of the spots that had a lot more extra uh, seam allowance. And then you iron it and it kind of shrinks that fabric so it, it plays and it uh, works with you instead of against you. So that's how you do strips together. So I'll just show you over at the wall. This was our last piece that we needed to do to now be ready. I'm gonna obviously this piece I just finished, I gotta bring it back over to the ironing board, but just so you can see what it looks like. We now have north, south, east, west, west quadrants all done. So we're gonna bring all these pieces over to the ironing table, iron them nice and flat. Then we're gonna work on placement. Um, we're looking at removing these borders on the side of this one here. Um, and that would just be nicer for this to to match up instead of having a border in between. And then we'll get into an important step, which will be when you sew these three together, um, you're going to have to make sure that you have your points lined up with your east and west quadrant. And when you do have those lined up and you've marked it where you want to go, you're going to have to add your quarter inch seam allowances so that once you've sewn these two to the panel, they line up again because if you match them up and just sew them the way you are you'll lose your half inch altogether so but we'll go through that in a second all right so we are ready to start working on putting the north and south the top and bottom of the quilt attaching them to the panel to then bring the sides in so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the top and the panel first uh, that way we'll figure out where we want to cut this attach it to here this will all be set in stone and then we'll be able to anticipate where we want to put the bottom part. So we're first off, we're going to take this piece off and we're going to clean this up, cut a nice straight edge into it so we can attach it to the panel. So bring it over to your cutting board, square it up as best as you can on one of your lines. And it's pretty good. I mean, it's off a little bit and we are going to cut a straight line using one of the lines on your cutting board. So we'll get rid of all our points here. All right, so now we have a nice straight edge to, to work with. And we are gonna end up sewing it in the middle of the panel, right? Because we're gonna get rid of these borders. So it almost li lines up actually perfectly with being able to, once we have this attached to this and we have the bottom attached, then we'll go ahead and square them off together um, and then attach the sides. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay this over top like so with the, uh, with the border showing in about a quarter inch seam. We can even cut this down right across the top, um, leaving just, just a little bit under a quarter. So we don't have any of that border show down, show through when we're sewing it together, but I'll bring it over to the cutting board here and I'll hack that bit off. Okay, so top of the quilt here, line this thing up on your cutting board, make sure that she's already pretty square. These panels never come square, so you'll just have to mind it so you get a nice straight edge here. And then once you have that border matching up with the edge of your ruler, shift your ruler a bit just a little bit, you can see just a little bit less than a quarter inch 
where that border lines up in the lines there. I want to make sure that we have our quarter inch seam and when we sew this to our panel we don't have any of that border show up. So a little bit less than a quarter will make sure it doesn't show up. So once you've got that, cut that top off your panel. And we'll now be able to take the top, the bottom of our top section of the quilt, line it up here in the panel with the edge and put it in the middle. So you can see while it's in the middle, I have a little bit of the blue showing on this side and a little bit of the blue showing on that side. So I know when we square this thing up, we're not going to have any of this border show up when we go to sew it to the sides. So same thing, I'm going to pin this together. Um, you don't really have any points to match up. So um, if you want to match it up to certain spots with her body, but we are going to let this lay exactly like that, pin it together, sew that quarter inch seam, and then we'll be ready to attach the bottom. All right, so we've sewn these, uh, the top and the panel together. You can see that none of that border is showing, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, we've ironed our seam open. So we've laid it down on the um, project wall here to just see the matchup. And it matches up really nice. Actually, just pull this above it. Kind of hide that border that's going to be gone anyways. The cotton's nice because it kind of, the or the batting, kind of the cotton kind of sticks to it. So you only need a couple pins up at the top. So that's what it's going to look like. You can see that her wings really take off uh, with the way that we set up the uh, hexagons to go on this side. So now we have the bottom chunk. So this is where it's going to be important to make sure that you anticipate your seam allowance, right? Because we want these two to match up right here. Right here, we want these two to center perfectly together, right? So when we have this set where we're gonna want it, I'm gonna pin it, pin it to here, probably up above. We can actually take this panel off and go ahead and get rid of that border again, like we did up top. And then once that's gone, we'll find out exactly where we're lining up. You can set a pin maybe on this fabric and a pin on this fabric, as well as line it up here, pull this away, set up a pin, set up a pin on both fabrics. Then you know to move this a full half inch. By moving it the full half inch, you're gonna take that half inch away when you do your two quarter inch seam allowances and it should match up perfectly. If you're off by an eighth of an inch, even a little bit more, you can always pull your fabric while you're sewing it and put some pins in to make it go where you want it. I mean, it's it's cotton, so it's very forgiving. So yeah, we're gonna take this piece off. We're gonna cut this border right off of the panel. We're gonna line these up where we think is gonna be the exact spot. And uh, we are going to um, pin it to get our, to get our uh, perfect gauge of where we want it. We're gonna obviously trim off these top triangle, 60 degree angles that we did up top. We're gonna shift our fabric down a half inch flip right and then we're going to sew it together all right so we have sewed the bottom part portion onto the quilt now attached to the panel and we have lined them up and they're pretty close it did it was off a little bit so we actually pulled this panel down we gave it a little bit of a tug and it lined up so that's perfect we are now going to chop this right right on the border line because you can see the border line is on both sides chop that right off then we'll sew these segments together again flip it over i'm going to line up all my points that i want lined up pin it and sew it same with this side once we've sewed this side on we're going to chop this one off around the border this one looks like it goes off a little bit we'll we'll go in with it and bring this one as well is a little bit shorter than it needs to be we pulled on it it's pretty close now, and I'm gonna make it mined with needles at the end. It will look good. So this is uh, three, now you got three straight lines to sew. So just chop off the edges on each side of your panel and three last stitches to get your quilt into a point where you can square it up and start working on the borders. Okay, so we have sewn all of our strips together. Everything is put together now. Uh, one thing we noticed is, is it gets a little bit narrower in the center of the quilt 
out to the side. So, and Delilah had a good point where we should add another black strip so we have black all the way around the quilt before we add in the accented um, one inch border, which is gonna be like this, right? Instead of having it on top of the color, let's add some more black and blue. So what we're gonna do, because it narrows a bit, we're gonna do a four inch strip because it is already, the distance at the bottom and the top, they match but it goes in about a half inch on the on the so, in the middle. So if we add a four inch strip, by the time we square off our quilt, we should have the extra fabric um, on each side, allowing it to be squared up nicely, having that black in place, and then being able to square this up to start doing the border. So that next step, we're gonna cut strips at four inch, just to do on the sides, and then we'll get ready for the one inch border. So we're ready to square up the quilt before we throw in our one inch border. So we have squared up both our uh, long, long sides of the quilt. So we're just laying it down flat on our cutting board, lining up the side we already squared up, and we are going to cut off the adjacent side. So I'm really just going to keep as much as possible. I can see that this is my lowest cut on both sides of the quilt. So I'm going to lay my ruler over top. Find a nice square spot. I'm lining up with the edge of my uh, actual cutting board. And now we have a square quilt to start working on our one inch border. You can hang it back on your wall here if you'd like just to get a look at it. All right, so that's what she looks like here before the border goes on. And now we're going to cut our one and a half inch strips because when you lose your seam allowance on each side, you will end up with a one inch border. All right, so we have cut our one and a half inch strips of our accent fabric. Um, you're gonna wanna cut off the one end that has the, uh, like the title of the name of the fabric. I like to give them a quick iron straight down as well. You're gonna sew all these together. I like to sew them all together. And then once I've sewn one side, so I'm gonna do the two sides of the quilt first, then I'm gonna cut the extra off just to square it, and then I'll do the top and the bottom. So go ahead and sew all these strips together. You can do a, a straight stitch if you want, or you can do a 45 degree. It's really up to you. Um, since this is all straight lines on this quilt, I mean they're triangles, but you know what I mean, they're all straight lines. I'm just going to continue on with straight lines, and I am going to go ahead and once I have this one and a half inch strips together, I'm going to go ahead and sew them onto the side, both sides, trim off the edges, and uh, then go ahead and do the top and bottom. Okay, now that we've finished our borders, we are at the process now where we make a quilt sandwich. So we are getting ready to start free motion quilting. So if you've watched other videos that we've posted, you're quite familiar with this. If not, that's okay. A quilt sandwich is made up of your quilt top, your batting and your backing, right? So three layers. Now, important thing is to make sure you got an extra inch and a half, two inches of each the batting and the backing, okay? Because this quilt is gonna is gonna stretch on you a bit, so it's always nice to have that extra, so that when you stretch, um, you never exceed that, and then you're going to have to square your quilt off later, and you're losing some quilt that you didn't want to lose in the first place. So um, yeah, always about we like the rule of thumbs two inches, two inches of extra batting and backing, and that is all the way around the quilt, right? So we're a little bit low on the bottom here, but that's okay. All right, so we're gonna get ready to start uh, basting this. So we're ready to um, join this quilt together now, make our quilt sandwich. Uh, a couple things I noticed with some of this fabric is the little frays. So usually I just pull them just enough till they stop coming and then I just trim them out. Right. There's many ways people uh, quilt 
build their quilt sandwich, you can use these pins. These pins are bent. They've got a bit of a hook in them, making them easier to pop in and come back through your fabric. You can use pins and we, our preferred method is to use basting spray um, and then I usually use pins or the bobbins, the safety pins to hold it together while I'm quilting it. This is a bit, this is a nice size quilt. This is a little bit longer than uh, our elephant abstractions we did. So um, I only have a seven and a half, nine inch throat. So it is going to, I like to give it a spray um, and every once in a while I like to iron it because it reactivates that spray. So you open your window, preferably do this outside. We're in Alberta, the quilt will blow away. So we're not gonna do this outside. So I'm just going to flip up one end. And I'm gonna apply the spray to the batting. Grab your quilt, lay it down over top, and I like to push towards the corners and the edges. The quilt is going to stretch as you quilt it from the center out, so try and get that going that direction already. So I'm going to base this whole thing top and bottom. Um, before I put any pins in it and I slowly just because our cutting board is only so long I'm going to work it back out to there flip the quilt over do another third section lay it down and then do the last third section and then it's easy to tell you lift it till you can feel the glue actually take over right right there so there's the just of it that is the top quilt top um and he adhered down to the batting so now i'm going to flip this over i'm going to do the backing onto the batting throw a couple pins in in some certain spots and then i'm going to start free motion quilting on her first um, for her, I'm just doing a basic outline. I'm going to go around her body, um, through the tree and her hair a little bit, through her wings, around the planet. That's going to be to tack the panel down. And then I've got three patterns set aside for inside the hexagons. And I will be changing colors to about three, three different colors throughout this quilt, um, just to kind of blend nicely with the colors. And uh, we'll show you that process as we go. We are ready now to start free motion quilting. We basted our quilt into a quilt sandwich. Um, I have created a new quilt sandwich because the one I previously had is, it's got too much now. This is where I test my tension. So I drew a hexagon that matches the exact same size as the ones on the quilt. And that way I could just practice some free motion with a pencil. And these are the three designs that I have come up with that I am going to incorporate into the hexagons. I haven't quite determined what I'm going to do in the black border yet, um, but that, I will come across that. So when you're setting up your quilt machine for free motion, your feed dogs go down. Do you want to come in here? Sure. Your feed dogs go down. There should be a setting on your on your machine to make sure that those are below. Um, I like this free motion foot. Um, there are many, there are tons and tons of free motion feet. This one I like because I can run my ruler alongside if I'm doing any straight edges. Um, obviously my tension is down according to what my machine says it should be. Um, we have our Teflon sliding sheet that goes over top like that. We have our gloves. And um, so we will test out our tension real quick here just to see what we're dealing with. 
make sure that we have good tension before we bring this over to our our final product because we don't want to we might as well catch some mistakes in this step first Okay, so we come zoom in here. Tension's really nice on the top, and then we'll flip it over. Tension's really nice on the bottom. So that's where I'm gonna keep my tension, and now I'll move over to my quilt. All right, I'm gonna start in the center of the quilt, like I said when we were basting this quilt together. Um, so I've got some brown thread in. Um, it's gonna fall in line with these earthy tones. So I'm gonna start at the, her hairline and kind of follow the trees just a little bit with uh, some free motion and work my way out of the center. Uh, you want to work your way out of the center because finally you'll be able to get away from having to roll your quilt up. Obviously with the nine inch throat here, we only have so much room, right? So you can see I've got it on my shoulder here, but I can tell that I have quite a bit of motion right now. So that's what I'm looking for. Alright, so I'm working hexagon by hexagon. The nice thing about this quilt is you just need to focus on one hexagon at a time so you don't have to, you know, ah, you have a whole quilt to build. You can just focus on hexagon. Um, you can see for her in the middle, I just accented her, her hands, her head. I did a little pink on her lips and on the flower. Um, I accented the globe and um, just the waves and stuff and then in her hair, I went around with the, the green thread. You can't really see it, but it helps pop it and just kind of followed the veins of the trees um, as well as the um, waterfall area of her just to kind of give it a little bit of texture, right? A couple little stars I did to fill those in. And that also, you know, this was a large area that didn't have any quilting in it. So I just tacked it down with those two stars. Then you can see in my hexagons, I've had some patterns that I drew up. And I moved on to the quilt. Um, you can see the feathers. This one's stri strictly just a swirl going around and and then following the foot of my my uh, quilting foot here, just to give me the good spacing. And um, so I've got about three, four patterns right now that I'm just filling in all the areas with. Um, and you can just focus on one one hexagon at a time, which is nice. So then I'm going to work on this one right here and I'll probably do the circle that's got some pebbles in the middle followed by feathers surrounding it. So i got to roll up my quilt a bit here just to be able to get it in my throat and then test it out to make sure that I have full mobility of my whole hexagon. All right, so I just start with a circle. Fill it in with pebbles, all different sizes. Then I like to do a border around my circle. And then I am ready. 
ready to start doing feathers. So I start going up with a feather and a quick hook. And I just leave that hook like that for when I'm gonna finish off the feathers. Wait. And there you go, that's one hexagon filled in. It's quite easy. I'll do a little uh, echoing around here. And I have been doing stitching in the in the seams um, before I do a hexagon, just so then the fabric doesn't move around on me. All right, so I have now finished quilting all of the hexagons <clears throat> inside this quilt. We did have some extra hexagons and small pieces and oddball pieces left over. So we actually steam a seamed them and we laid them down kind of showing as if the quilt's fracturing over the border because we really, really love quilts where the patterns go and break the border. So we've stuck these down just steam seam. So they're sticking. We haven't ironed them yet. Um, there's some more over here kind of fracturing away from the main body of the quilt and breaking the border. And then we had one more down here that we have stuck. We're going to iron these down and then I'm going to bring them over to the quilt machine and I'm going to use a uh, satin stitch or a, a zigzag stitch or even uh, the straight stitch that kind of kicks out like a T. I think I'm probably going to use that one and then I can do a little quilt inside of them. Probably just geometric um, that'll tack and hold them down and then I am ready to start drawing. I'm going to go with a feather. So it's the same feather we did for uh, Chasing Dreams and I am just going to take one of my Mark Be Gone or erasable chalk pencils, white, and I'm just going to go around and draw like the vein of the feather and I'm going to do the whole border with feathers. Okay, so when I'm doing feathers, which I've done on many of the quilts we've made, I like to do the stem first. And I usually use my uh, chalk pencil just to mark the stem along the border. So I'm going to start at the first top loop and I'm going to follow my trace line all the way uh, around my whole pattern. Okay, so you can see I've now traced out my whole line all the way through the corner up to meet with where I have already done the feathers around the border. So now I'm going to fill these in with uh, the feather bumps and that will pretty much lead me onto the last border, maybe some straight lines just to hold it in place. All right, so now that we've done the main vein of the feather, I usually pick a spot in the middle so the feathers can go one direction and then change direction the other way. So usually all I do is start somewhere in the middle and I do a bubble that favors both sides. So pretty much just a teardrop. And then you can see from the teardrop how the teardrop goes into the vine in both directions. So now I can switch directions when I've hit this bubble. So
Feathers just take practice, right? Nobody's really that good at them when they start. So I'm gonna do both sides of this bubble just so you can see what I mean by changing directions. Right, so now my, fe my feathers are going this way, up that way, and they're going the opposite way, going this way towards the tops of each side. Um, one thing I try to do is if I have a bubble there, I'll try and change the bubble on the other side. Maybe I'll just throw it right here. And now this side will start from here, instead of the exact same spot as the last one. And then I'm just going to continue this all the way until the whole border is filled, making sure that I make the bubbles bigger, the feathers bigger, where I go, where I've got more space. Okay, so all the free motion quilting is now done. So I'm squaring off my quilt. I've squared off three points already, and I'll go through the last piece. <clears throat> we started with the bottom of our quilt. That was our starting point. Um, our reference for this quilt was the one inch border. So I laid this down flat and the one inch border on the, on the bottom was very straight. So I went two and an eighth off of it. And then I did the same with the sides. The sides, they had a little bit of a bow in the border. So I just pretty much picked a point on each side and followed it and let the bow happen. So there's a little bit of more fabric um, here opposed to the ends. But that's perfectly fine you won't really see that when it's hanging up um, i just looked at this side and it's pretty close to square maybe just a little bow in the middle i'm not too worried about it so i'm going to continue on with the number that's been working for me which is two and an eighth or two and a quarter sorry and i just line up my line up my ruler and i know my bow is right here so i'm going to let it go past my two and a quarter So we're cutting through all three layers, right? We want to have a nice square quilt with our batting and our backing alike. And now what we're left with is a square quilt ready to be binded. So I'm going to put my binding foot on and I'm going to be ready to finish this quilt. All right, so I am building my binding. Depending on the method that you are going to use to do your binding will determine the, length, the width of your binding. I'm using a binding foot and it takes two inch binding. So I'm only going to make mine two inches wide. And I figured that this quilt's gonna take six strips at 42 inches. So I am going to mark this uh, right here in the corners and I'll show you why. So I'm just gonna see where that corner is, there it is. Corners, corner. So I'm gonna sew these two together. When I sew it together, it's gonna to open like that on a diagonal. I don't, I mean, you can do a straight stitch. It doesn't matter. I like them on the diagonal for the binding. It just flows better. Um, so I'll bring this over to the machine.
Okay, so now when it opens up, nice straight line and do the exact same thing. So when you're setting up the next one, what you need to make sure is that you know which side is your good side. So what I mean by that is if you set it up with always your good side facing up, your next side will fall in order again. So if you lay the strip over top, do the same process we had just did. Sew it together, open it good side facing top. Just always remember to keep your good side facing top. And then before you move on, obviously, let's trim this down to about a quarter inch. You can iron them open if you would like. You don't necessarily have to with a binding foot. It pulls it, it'll pull it all to one direction anyways. So you're gonna do this six, five times to connect six strips. Okay, so we are ready to start binding. We just finished cutting our two inch strips and sewing them together. Um, this is our binding foot. This is binding foot is specifically for our machine um, in Janome. So um, it's adjustable. So we're not going to tighten those just yet because we're going to have to adjust this to where we want it. Again, I'm done quilting, so I had to reset my tension on the on both. I changed my foot back to uh, this foot actually goes with this binding um, attachment. So we've reset our machine back. We've picked a zigzag. Um, smooth zigzag stitch for our binding that we usually use. <clears throat> so we are going to um, so we are going to feed our fabric through bad side of the fabric facing us, meaning the side that has the seam that you're going to want to hide in the binding is facing us. So you just stick, you just look this help this thing through. I usually use my seam ripper on this part just to get a hold of that fabric. There we go. And it brings the fabric all the way through. And then all I do is I feed the fabric in the middle and pull it until I see this. So you can see the two, the two halves folding in on themselves and that is where it's going to fold over the raw edge and sew it down so you don't see any of that raw edge. Once I have this once I have this nice and flowing freely you can kind of gauge by pulling it where you need your foot to be, and I'm going to get my foot right about there. And I will just tighten these lightly with my hand, because I'm probably going to have to move them again. And now I'm ready to put my quilt in here and get it started. So I'm going to I'm going to go about two, three inches. I'm going to check my tension again, just because we were quilting and we stopped. So I want to make sure my tension's all good now. So I'm going to feed my fabric in this slot here, underneath the foot, give it a good pull, and then I just grab my fabric and kind of tuck it on there, and then I can give it a pull back and forth, and it'll, it'll reset that fabric. You're going to have a little bit to throw out off the edge just with the lineup, but that's fine. So what I watch for is just to make sure that the edge of my quilt is butted right up against here 
and then I let it do its thing. And then I check to make sure my stitch is where I want it. Tension is good, tension looks good. I probably would like my stitch a little bit more this way. So I just loosen these off just a little bit, move this back slightly and tighten them up and then it will self adjust itself here. That's what I like. I like to have about two, three mil away from the edge to where my stitch is. So now I'll just go along with that all the way around the quilt. Well, here we are. She's done. A uh, wonderful time building this quilt. A lot of fun uh, with our personal personalization of how we want to place our hexagons. Um, coming up with the idea to steam a seam some extra pieces on there to make it look like it's fractured and starting to leave the borders. I always love that effect. Again, this is a Josephine Wall pillow panel. Uh, there's four of them. These are the four that there are that we have on our store. So we'll have these in kits at cottagetreasures.store. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave some comments and likes down below. Um, again, this is a one block wonder type of quilt and we hope you enjoyed the ride and come visit us again on YouTube and uh, see you later. And this part is only just going to be honest.